So I've made here a cyanotype enlarger. Let me check it out. Check it out here. So I got a slide projector, slide to project to the wall, and I'm making a cyanotype. You can see that. So it's 35 millimeter. Okay. Put it in a. Um, this was this this slide holder. This negative holder is just from a scanner, and uh, I put pencils in it to hold it in place. Let's see. See there, sort of pushes it up against that, and a few samples. Um, it makes great cyanotypes. It's a lot of fun. This is my favorite, the uh, the lighthouse here. Oh, we're two hours into a four-hour exposure, and I want you to notice the lights are still on. Yep, lights don't matter. It needs ultraviolet, and these lights are not ultraviolet, so they don't affect the print. Okay. So basically, ultraviolet bulb glued to a heat sink. Heat sink is cooled with a fan that was already in there. And then the power supply is tucked away in the back there. And there you have it. Pretty simple. This is an Argus 300. That just means it had a 300 watt bulb in it. Uh, any slide projector, of course, will do. And if you're not familiar with cyanotypes, they're a lot of fun. I've got a lot of uh, cyanotypes here I've made. Here's a few samples. Uh, they're large. This one is actually a contact print. That's an old photo of my mom. Uh, that was, you know, a six by nine negative. This is an enlarged. It's a couple of uh, a couple of enlargements. Some contacts. This was my early work with contact, working on contacts, and that this is a, also a contact print. And then here's when I started getting into enlarging. Uh, you can see lots of lots of fun here. Pick this up. This is your slide projector. Here's what it looks like with the original light bulb in it. All right, take the light bulb out. Okay, and you put this in. Actually, it's not that simple. All right. All right, you'll see. You put the sock, you take the uh, light bulb socket off with with these screws here. I'm not going to do it because I don't feel like doing it. There we go. That's a reflector. Pull that off of there. Then you're going to put this in. Make sure that the uh, heat sink side is facing the glass. Now with the socket out, this will, this will slip all the way down. Remember, pretend this isn't there. This isn't, uh, this one burned out, so I'm using it as a demo. Slip this in. You would then glue this in place, all right? Then, when it's done, I'm not going to do it here. It looks like this. All right. So, this is everything. This is everything here. Let's take this off of here. Power supply, wired to the AC. It's just glued onto the metal frame. You put the heat sink in first. Wait till it dry, till, till the whatever glue you use. Wait till it dries. Then I waited 24 hours. Shine a flashlight in this end, and you'll see where the center. You see where the light shines. That's where the center is for the ultraviolet light. Then you put the chip. You glue the chip to that spot. Solder the wires on before you glue the UV light to the heat sink, okay? So your UV light is glued on with this thermal glue. Okay? All right. 
that's how you assemble this. This copper is here just to hold my heatsink in place while the heatsink dried. And I thought, I'll just leave it there because it doesn't hurt anything. And if you do it wrong, you get to pull it out and try it again. This one, you see, burned out. I used too much power. So buy the recommended power source and you'll have to worry about burning out your LED. This photograph was taken with a about an 80 year old camera. 80, 70, 70 or 80 year old camera. Um, and lens, so that's what makes this kind of fun.